Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Katie. I am the owner and artist behind Salvaged by Kay Scott. I make my living right here out of my home, painting and restyling found and thrifted furniture. My absolute favorite thing to do is take a piece of furniture that is worn out or just plain outdated and turning it into something sleek and modern again. In this week's video, I am gonna take things right back to basics. I am gonna do this transformation old school the way I did four years ago when I first started painting furniture before I had all the fancy tools. I love making over small dressers like this. They're so versatile. This guy is the perfect size to be an oversized nightstand, a change table in a baby nursery, extra storage in the guest room or home office, an entry table. The possibilities are endless. So when I found this guy for $17 at the Habitat for Humanity Restore, you better believe I snatched it up. I wanna do a sleek, light, two-toned or paint-dipped finish on this guy. And I'm gonna go back to basics. I'm gonna put down my fancy sander and my paint gun. A few months ago, I invested in this Surf Prep 3x4 electric ray sanding system with a vacuum hookup. I absolutely love it, but it's expensive. And I started this business way back when with a little Mastercraft mouse sander. You can get a lot done with a cheap little sander like this. For the new design I have in mind, I need to strip the old finish off of the top section of this dresser. I started out with some 80 grit sandpaper on my mouse sander. To avoid sanding swirls, you want to try and move your sander slowly with the grain of the wood and try not to apply too much pressure. You want to let the machine do the work. Since I'm already here sanding, I went ahead and just scuffed up the bottom portion of the dresser that I'm going to be painting as well. Once I was done removing the original finish and stain with my 80 grit sandpaper, I went ahead and switched it up to a 120 grit to start smoothing things out. Then I switched out my sandpaper one more time to a 150 grit to start closing up the wood grain and get it ready for my new lighter stain color. She is looking like quite a mess at the moment, but don't you worry, I've got big plans. The next morning I came back and just went over everything one more time by hand sanding with that 150 grit sandpaper, just to make super extra sure I didn't have any swirl marks from my sander. This dresser is constructed with maple, which tends to be a little finicky when it comes to even stain coverage. Because of that, I decided to pre-treat with some of this Varathane wood conditioner. Wood conditioners or pre-stain treatments like this seal up the top layer of the wood so that the stain color that you apply will absorb a little more evenly. I just followed the directions on the can, applying with a clean lint-free rag 30 minutes before I was ready to stain. For my new wood color, I'm gonna use this Varathane Ultimate Wood Stain in the color Sun Bleached. Again, just applying it as directed on the can with a clean lint-free rag. Once I had my stain applied to the entire surface, I came back with another rag and wiped away any excess.
After I left my stain to dry for a few hours, I came back out to the garage and taped off the bottom portion of this dresser that I'm going to be painting bright white. Here I'm using some frog tape, which is my preferred brand when I'm wanting a really clean, crisp line. It just works better than anything else I've ever used. I'm gonna go ahead and prime all of the areas that I'm gonna be painting with some Zinzer Bin Primer. This is going to seal in anything that is gonna to wanna to stain my new bright white finish. I like to let this primer dry really well for a few hours and then I came back in with some 400 grit extra fine sandpaper on a sanding block and sanded back any texture that was left behind by my roller. Now I'm going to apply some Rust-Oleum Chalked in Linen White with my Zebra 2 inch Palm Pro paintbrush. When I'm brushing chalk style paints, I like to add a little bit of water both to my paint and to my brush. I find it helps the paint glide a little easier over the surface and also reduces brush strokes. I like to pop my brush into a little plastic zip top bag between coats to keep it fresh. I also like to sand again with that 400 grit sandpaper between coats of paint to minimize brush strokes and keep everything sleek and crisp. After I applied two coats of the chalk paint sanding in between coats, I wanted to apply two coats of this Verithane Poly Top Coat. I decided to seal the painted portion on its own so that I wasn't accidentally dragging any of that white pigment up into my wood stained area. The Zebra Fan Brush is my preferred brush of choice for applying liquid top coats.
once I had two coats of top coat applied to the painted portion of the dresser, I went ahead and peeled off that tape and applied two coats to the top wood stained area as well. And before I put my dresser back together, I decided to apply the same sun bleached wood stain to the sides and interiors of the drawers just to finish everything off. Never ever let not having all the fancy tools hold you back from being creative. Let's take a look at what I created with a really old sander and a paintbrush. I got this feeling like it's starting now, starting now. I feel adventurous with you. And there is nothing that can hold us back, hold us back. We can do what we want to do. Cause we got all the time in the world For better or worse We should stay together So let's stay young and in love We should focus on us Forever Yeah baby if you I hope you guys love this transformation just as much as I do. If you are not already subscribed to my channel I would be so grateful if you could take a moment to do that before you go today. And I... We'll catch you guys next time.